So, good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Jens. How are you? Chilling in Finland? Yeah, it was, it was almost like summer yesterday and day before yesterday, but now it's back to springtime. I'm not complaining, sun is shining. Yeah, well, you have to take what you can these days. Exactly. So, uh, we're doing a little video talk here, so just a warm welcome to those uh, who are watching. So, I'm a sales and business development manager for Direct Conversion. For those people who are new to us, uh, Direct Conversion manufactures photon counting X-ray detectors. Um, we've been uh, fitted into thousands of dental X-ray systems all over the world for the past 10 years. But one key thing is that a lot of dentists don't even know that we exist, uh, which is quite interesting. So we want to spend some time with uh, talking to you guys and explaining what a photon counting detector is, what it, what it does, what's the difference. So I'm joined today by my colleague, Thomas Panzer, who is the product manager at Direct Conversion. Uh, he's over there in Finland. Um, hi, Thomas. Hi, Jens. Thank you for introducing me. Part of the DC team for almost 20 years now working with Direct Conversion Technology and uh, Recently with photon counting. Happy to be part of this call. And as always, you're um, very low key. But what what Thomas doesn't know about detectors is not worth knowing, to my to my knowledge. So it's good to have you on board. Um, and we had a discussion back in IDS 2019. Uh, we talked with dentists, and afterwards we realized we'd be quite good to have a discussion and clear out some of the questions on what photon countering compared to conventional technology. What can it do for dentists? What can it, what, what does it do? Um, do you remember that discussion, Thomas? I do very well. And I hope we will have actually new ideas coming physically at some point. Let's see. Yeah, so I think it would be a good thing if we can just sort of start by explaining what is photon counting detectors from direct conversion? How is it different to conventional detectors in panoramic uh, cephalomatic using CMOS technology? Yes, so basically the fundamental difference is that uh, our sensors are digital from the very start. So not only we see what is coming from the X-ray source, but we count them. We count the X-rays or the photons each and every one of them. And we can, we can even distinguish the energy of each photon, which allows us to do wonderful things. Yeah, I mean, I'm on the sales and business development side, so I'm less technical when it comes to terminology, but a, a conventional CMOS technology converts energy into light, and then the light is converted to an image. And to me, those are, each step on the way is a risk that you lose some information. And we don't we don't have to do that with our detectors, right? Yes, it's the the direct conversion technology. These materials such as uh, cadmium telluride to do the conversion. So we we can directly detect the X rays and we get an electric signal that we can store and process instead of having these multiple stages of conversion, which each stage decays the signal, and even more we lose precious information like the energy in in this process of doing it the traditional way yeah so but what would you say so if an x-ray image using photon, photon counting is being used compared to cmos does it contain more information each image or is it the same uh, yes so that, that's a very good question and i think there are two answers the first one is that uh, uh, because of the process, how we handle the images, our image is, is sharper. We get all the information there is available in the X-rays coming to the detector. So that's an improvement on the image quality over the competing technology. Mm -hmm. But the breakthrough part is really that uh, we actually get this energy information. So we get multiple images at the same time. So we can do a bone image, we can do a soft tissue image from the same X-ray dose, the same exposure than the standard panoramic. So you get like three images for the cost or the dose of one, which offers a lot of still uncharted clinical potential. Yeah, I mean, we don't know where that's going. And that's sort of the cool part with our technology, but 
you mentioned something there, dose, Thomas. I know it's it's not a big discussion in dental compared to other industries like medical field that we work with, but I mean, in my world, our detectors are more sensitive, so it requires less signal to capture the images, and it has an effect on those, right? It does. So basically, a dose from the standard panoramic exposure is comparable to a flight, an intercontinental flight. So if you are a person going to dentist uh, every five years, take one exposure, it's not a big difference. But if for some reason you need to go to have your x-rays taken more often, you're going through orthodontical treatment or something, the dose starts accumulating. And especially the orthodontics is done mostly on younger people who are still more vulnerable to the, all, the, all the bad effects of, of radiation. So there it makes a big, big difference in, in dose. Yeah, I mean, those uh, absorption is calculated over lifetime. So if you start when you're young, going to the dentist and you have some issues, you might sort of, um, get, the, get a lot of uh, radiation absorbed over your lifetime. And that's a key thing. Exactly. So then there was, I mean, the dentists we spoke to during IDS, they were really interested in what photon counting can do and how is it different. It was a really good discussion compared for us, it was new because normally we speak to engineers and to technical people at OEMs. Uh, that means the, um, the X-ray system manufacturers. But one of the key things that came up was time. So time is really important for dentists. They wanna have an efficient exam. They wanna go through their patients uh, during the day. So there is a speed, there's a speed factor to this. Um, and in all our other applications, in the industrial applications, speed is a big thing, and that could be the reason why they go for photon counting. Is there a difference with our detectors? In yes, speed comes, speed comes in so many different flavors. In, in industrial applications, it's about the speed of processing the conveyor belts. But what comes to a medical application, there are two things that matter the most. The first one is that you want to see and find all the things that there are to be seen in the image. When you're reading the image, you need to want, you want to find everything that is relevant. And the time it takes you to find these things is proportional to the quality of the image. Hmm. Better the image, the faster you can do the reading and more comprehensive uh, picture you get from the patient's situation. So speed is definitely a, a key factor in, in any medical or, or dental radiological work. That's a good point. The other key thing the dentists were really keen to know about was efficiency in use means maintenance, calibration, and lifetime of the detector. Is it different to CMOS technology or the, the traditional one? Do you want to elaborate a little bit on that, Tom? Basically, there's the scintillator materials, the material converting the X-rays to light that can be detected by the, the CMOS or the CCD or the TFTs, you name the technology. Uh, is decaying. As the radiation is absorbed, it damages this scintillating layer and which requires calibrations. And especially in the beginning of the lifetime of the product, this decay can be fairly sharp, which means that you might need to have a calibration, you might need to invite a technician to do this through the service. And with direct converting detectors, it's really radiation hard material, which means that it's not changed as, as a, the radiation dose accumulates which means that the interval between uh, maintenance can be prolonged, which again, increases the, the efficiency, the throughput uh, reduces the downtime and which is uh, all under the bottom line. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, and now we're coming into the more uncharted territory here where, where potentially what can photon counting do in the future for dentistry? So. Well, you mentioned it briefly. So our detectors enables the functionality of dual energy. And we're not really sure what it can do for dentists, but there are some key interesting things there, like removing artifacts. Uh, you mentioned separating bone from soft tissue and stuff like that. There's also some really exciting research being done. I know you're, you're heading that project, but do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? We got some good feedback from dentists and IDS on what would be the key sort of uh, functionalities. But you want to elaborate a little bit on what are uh, sort of what we're targeting? 
Sure, absolutely. So basically the dual energy is something that has entered the, the medical domain already many years ago. And all the best CT systems are, have been dual energy and there is no going back. Mm. And uh, what happens in the medical world is always followed by the dental world. So uh, now we are bringing this uh, same dual energy technology used by these uh, bulky, expensive systems to a, a uh, clinical system that can be installed in, in a normal dental office. So what are the benefits is that if you look at the pa standard panoramic image, uh, it has a lot of disturbing feeds, so different shadows from soft tissue from the bone on the other side, the spine shadow. Um, all these are disturbing the reading of the image. So what we strongly believe in is that the dual energy technology, which like Jens mentioned, you can separate the bone and the soft tissue. So you get two images, one that is only the bone content without any of the soft tissue disturbing the image. And on the other hand, you will get the soft tissue image which doesn't have the bone content. And there you might have a lot of added potential seeing things that are not possible to see in a standard image because the bones are really providing the sharp feeds, so everything what you see is mostly bone. If you want to see small differences in the soft tissue, like inflammations, it probably is a lot easier to do in the soft tissue only image. And this is the technology what we are bringing from the medical field now to the denti dentist office. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm super excited to see the outcome of that. And I remember too, especially to, um, points the dentist made and one was if we can remove the shadow from the spine it will help uh, and then if we can also remove metal artifacts uh, from our images that would also be a killer thing um, and then of course there are some other uh, very interesting features like could we potentially measure the, uh, uh, the bone density I mean is that something you're looking at uh, absolutely that's uh... There are steps that are improvements of the existing panoramic, not changing the modality, offering more and easier to see things. But then there is this uh, next level of potential, which comes to, for example, the bone density measurement. So if you have a low dose system, what you can use for periodic imaging, and you might be able to actually measure the bone mineral density of each image and you see if there's a trend somewhere. So you can actually diagnose possibly osteoporosis in an early stage as a side product from your standard exposure and standard examination. Yeah, and normally people go to the dentist at least on a yearly basis. So, I mean, you will get a sort of continuously measurement on that. So that could be an additional functionality that this technology can bring to dentistry, right? Exactly, and it's something completely new that uh, it was not part of dentistry and is not part of dentistry. No, exactly. So I think, I mean, we're looking at some really interesting stuff and we want to connect with dentists who are really interested in uh, new technology and want to find out what we can do. And I think we're now part of uh, Varex Imaging. So we now have a complete profile, uh, com a complete portfolio to bring to dentistry. So we'll be really looking forward to IDS 2021 in Cologne. Uh, and I hope we got a lot of get a lot of engagement from dentists uh, to talk to them and also our OEMs. Feel free to contact us. But anything you want to add, Thomas, on uh, key things with our photon counting? What's the name of it, for example? The the product what we are launching the first at IDS uh, this year is called DC Vela which is a panoramic sensor. And uh, we also have plans for a cephalometric sensor. Uh, in addition, our technology obviously can be fitted uh, for CBCT if yeah. needed. Yeah, that's really good. So thanks, Thomas. I think you've done a terrific job of explaining this in, in words that I think uh, people who are not so tech savvy as yourself can understand. Um, so if people have any questions, they can just pop their comments or questions in this post and we'll try to answer them as, as good as we can. Uh, so thank you very, very much, Thomas, for spending the time. Yeah, thank you, Jens, for organizing this. And uh, I'm happy to talk about the technology, explain and answer all the questions there are. This is, this is my life. This is, yeah. this is my soul, where it is. Yeah, so this is where you live. So, this is where I live. Uh, 
<laughs> so that's good. So we're, we're looking forward to welcoming uh, visitors at our booth at IDS 2021 in Cologne. I hope uh, in these difficult times, I hope it's going to be a physical event, but of course we have to adapt. And if, if that's not the case, we will host some virtual um, meetings and we hope people will engage with us so we can learn more about what the dentists need uh, and what we can do for that technology. So uh, thanks a lot, Thomas, for joining me. And um, let's just move forward and uh, see what we can do. Let's do that. Thank you, Jens.